Let me tell you what I've been thinking about today, and in fact, for a couple of weeks now. I've been reading a little book as part of my morning devotional time, only a few pages a day, but it's a small book, so I finished it in not too long a time, even at a few pages a day. The book is titled, Time for All Things, and written by a Presbyterian minister who is now retired, perhaps he's not even living, but I think he still is, Charlie W. Shedd. Uh, I should tell you that uh, when I looked inside this book at the notation I had made to myself, I bought it 45 years ago this very month which means that I've had it around for a long while, and I'm just now getting around to reading it. Uh, that means that the title is a particularly appropriate one for me. Uh, obviously, although I had time for a number of things, for 45 years I didn't find the time to read this book, Time for All Things. I know why I bought it at the time, and I know also why I didn't get it read at the time, because it's a quick read. But the point, I guess, is this. When I bought it, I was looking for a book that would give me some quick hints about how to save an hour here and two hours there and a day here and a day there. And it isn't that kind of book at all. So after I got it and saw that uh, it wasn't going to give me the immediate help I needed where I was struggling as a busy pastor to get so many things done that I didn't seem to have time for, I therefore didn't get around to reading it. So time for all things. I didn't have time for this thing, this book. But, as I say, I've been reading it in recent weeks and finished it the other day as part of my morning devotional time. It's an interesting little book. It won't speed up your day. It won't save you that much actual time. It will put your time in new perspective. I admit that I'm a bit of a fanatic about time. I try to make my hours count. I'm not a workaholic as far as I know, but I do try to make my time count, and I hate to waste time. I don't mind having fun with time, but I don't like to have it wasted. There is a difference, you know. If you're just relaxing, great. If you're doing things that you enjoy, great. But just for time to be wasted, I think that's something of a sin, because this is the one irreplaceable resource. Nobody can give you more time except God. And I don't know how God would feel about getting more time to those of us who don't use rightly the time we have. There are 10 affirmations in this book. I'm not going to tell them all to you because you and I only spend about five to six minutes together when I come for these visits. But I want to tell you five of them that I think are especially significant out of the 10. But the first one I'd mention to you is this affirmation. Charlie Shedd says, I have as much time as anyone. That's an important thing to remember. Sometimes we like to say, if I had all the time so-and-so has, I'll tell you what I'd do. Well, we don't know how much we'd do if we had their amount of time because everybody gets the same amount of time, 24 hours a day. And the number of years we have, of course, that's something else again. I do think there are some people who have less time to themselves than others. I remember a woman in the church where I pastored who had four children under five years of age. She didn't have much time to herself. She said the only time she could be alone with God is if she went into the bathroom of their home for a few moments and could talk to God there during the day when the children were all at home as they were. So I have as much time as anybody. A second thing he says is, I will set aside moments to be with my Lord. That's a good rule. No matter how short you are on time, give time, first of all, above all, to God. I'm not a great manager in my own judgment, but I do see to it that every day begins with a time for God. That I insist upon. Then a third rule of his 10, I will make friends with divine interruptions come to realize that any interruption may be a gift. I may be inclined at first to think that it's just an intrusion on my time, but it can be a gift from God if I'll let it be. I'll call it a divine interruption, if that's the case. And then this one, I will be courteous 
of other people's time. If my time is valuable, so is yours. I have no right, therefore, to be casual about your time, to be holding you up when you have other things to do. That's a good rule to remember. Sometimes we are inattentive to other people's schedules and we're stealing their time. Their time is as valuable as ours. And then this one, above all, all my time belongs to God. It does. If I remember that, I will treat my time for what it is, sacred, a sacred gift that God has entrusted to me. It's a gift from God, therefore I ought to use it well and use it with care. Well, time for all things. I hope you find time today for the things that matter most to you and that you use it well and that especially you have time for God because it's God's time. That's what I've been thinking about today. God bless you.